Okay, hi. Um, today I am making chestnut scones. This is a family tradition for Thanksgiving. We do it every year. Um, it's not just for Thanksgiving, but it's one of the traditions that we do in our house. So I'm making it today. Um, I'm starting out with a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. And I'm adding to that three quarters of a cup of chestnut flour. And if you notice, the chestnut flour is a darker, tanner color. It smells earthy. It's an earthy smell, just like chestnut, which is perfect for the fall. Add that to that. To that, I add two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to mix that all together. Just give it a swirl here. And just like pastry, I'm adding into that one half of a cup of chopped cold butter, which I'm going to cut into my flour mixture here. You can do this with a pastry knife, you can do this with a fork, you can do this. Mixer, if you have it, a, you know, a Cuisinart kind of thing. Um, I just happen to like getting my hands really into it and getting really filthy. So you're going to cut it up and really smush it in there. You want the flakes. You want it to look like small peas. You can buy um, chestnut flour online. They sell it. Some supermarkets will sell it. There's a couple of you know, specialty. Uh, flour companies that sell it. It's not usually that. It's not incredibly common, but it's not uncommon. And I use it for everything. I don't just use it for chestnut scones. I use it for coating fish. Uh, I use it when I, if I bake bread, I replace, because it has no gluten, can't use all of it, but I replace maybe a quarter of a cup of it of the regular flour with chestnut flour to give it a little bit of an earthy flavor of the taste. Um, you use it as a thickener in sauces, and it's just it's just a wonderful earthy flavor, which I love. Okay, I think that that's good. If you look, we can see it's got some pieces of butter in there, but it's uh, pretty much mixed. I'm going to take and mix in, mix together. I have three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. One egg. And add to that. Put it. Okay. Now it's open. Quarter cup of vanilla. together so the egg gets a little beaten. Put that into your dry ingredients. And then with a fork, just mix everything till it's together. We don't want to overdevelop it again. Light and easy, just smushing. Once everything is mixed, here's the secret. We knead it in the bowl eight times. One. Okay. And now our dough is made. Get all the stuff off our fingers. Lightly flour the cabinet the counter. Good 
divide it into two. Let me pat it down to about, it would take a six inch circle, about half, a, half, half an inch thick. You divide it into six pieces. Lay that on our ungreased baking sheet. Okay, and this is our scone tray. We we'll put it into our preheated 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. 20 to 22, excuse me. 20 to 22 minutes. Okay. Just we'll check on the scones. They should be a nice, beautiful brown. Mm. Oh, they smell good. And there we have our beautiful chestnut scones. They will cool on this rack for a little bit, then I will take them off once it's readily handled, able to be handled. And I will put the scones on the rack to cool completely before eating, if you can wait that long. <laughs> um, remember, you can get your copy, digital copy of the cookbook by going to mvbhsaa.com for a 10 buck donation. Or you can get our, for a limited time, hard copy available for $30 uh, and we will mail it out to you. It's a beautiful book. Again, mvbhsaa.com. All the information is there for both versions. Enjoy your chestnut scones. Enjoy 167 other recipes. And I wish you could smell this kitchen right now. Bon appetit.